You gotta hit play. I did. You gotta hit play. On. It is Monday night, and this is Sketchy Live. You we're back. We're back. Did you miss us? I don't know if you did. I'm not <laughs> feeling it. No, I think you did. I missed us. Did you miss us? I, I missed us. Welcome to Sketchy Live. I am John Jalopy, and with me, my host, my counterpart, the linchpin with the beanie, theoretically the lynch mob. Um, <laughs> Itty B. Hi guys. What's going on? We are. What a Monday, huh? We are season five, oh, episode twenty-one today. Episode twenty-one. We hey. okay. Oh, we missed last week. We were traveling, um, mm -hmm. but we are back now. I feel like there's a lot of me. I'm like away over in the corner. No, you're good. I'm away in the corner. I don't think you are. Like my arm goes away. Yeah, I don't have an arm. You don't, why does your arm need to be out? I don't know, it's my drawing arm. You're going to be drawing. <laughs> hey, so tonight we are, uh, as you read uh, in the comments, and of course if you're catching us on YouTube, hey. Yes. Don't be afraid to hit like and subscribe. Definitely want to subscribe. We do this every Monday night live on Facebook, but you folks right there, yeah, you YouTubers, uh, I'm also a YouTuber person, I love to watch it. Um, but Facebook Lab. Yeah. Anyways, uh, we're every week new episodes. So yes. welcome to episode. We don't have a number, but it's the Boris and Natasha. I did say. watch out the little squirrel in the oh, loose. Although I don't know if it's okay for us to do the voices, so we're gonna be very careful. Why wouldn't I? I don't know. We just in these we do every in these, other voice in these day in these times and days, man. You just don't know if you do do a voice. millennial voice right now. That's not a millennial voice. What is it? I don't know. It's a voice. <laughs> Anywho, in any case. In any case. Hey, by the way, hit my screen. Look what I'm working on. Oh my goodness. Yeah, we're going uh the hot rod uh, t-shirt. Yes. Yeah, we're gonna, there will be a new black and white version very, very soon. Oh, cool. So we have this in full color, but you're liking it, you're digging it in black. And white. I'm gonna do it uh also a like our normal stuff. Yeah. One color. Yeah, so I that's like gonna it. happen. I like it. So that will be happening. Okay, get off my screen. Get off my, I got secrets in here. Get oh, off my screen. Oh, I didn't know I had to go all the way out. Okay. All right. Well, while you're getting set up, let me tell you who we've got on here tonight. Secretes. I got secretes. We've got Lizzie Daughtry joining us. Hello, my two favorite peeps of the week. Aw, oh, we're favorite you. peeps. Thanks for hanging out. Howard Pierpont is joining us. 70 degrees and thunderstorms in Trumbull, Connecticut. What are you doing in Connecticut? This guy travels. He time. does travel. He's the world. He's traveler. a traveling man. Um, Lizzie said, just to let everyone know that I'm having a jewelry sale tomorrow at 11 a.m. here on my Facebook page. Please come join me. So cool. go check that out. She's got some cool stuff. That's over always there. fun. Her resin jewelry. Resin. Uh, Tracy Courtfield is joining us. Hello, my beautiful people and army friends. What's going on? Tracy is crocheting me a blanket. Seems to be making some pretty good headway on he, it, too. I think he's done. Oh, okay. It was like 120 rows or something. Is that Hunnet? I'm excited. I can't wait. I can't wait to I see don't, it. I don't understand how the whole rows thing works. I don't know works, how it but... works. I think that's just like the length. I don't know. 
Because I only know every rose has its thorn. I guess every rose. I, I'm hoping he, there's no thorns in it. <laughs> <laughs> can I come back to your screen now? Uh, if you want. So people can see what you're doing over there. All right. We're going to do a little side-by-side -side action. So, again, Johnny has drawn up tonight for you what um, Boris and Natasha's vehicle in his head. Yeah, Actually. there. I did research. I did look on, watched a few Rocky Bullwinkles, mm -hmm. and theoretically, they didn't really have a specific vehicle. They're spies, so they would kind of have a mishmash of uh, different things. So at one point, they rode a motorcycle. Another time, they took a rocket. Was Whatever met of, the need. But I did, the, I did see. I guess at some point, Hot Wheels did uh, like they do with everything. They do like the Star Wars cars. They did, they did a Boris Natasha series. And they did a couple, and they were all kind of bubble top cars. Oh. So I'm kind of doing a bubbly top thing, but I'm also trying to kind of draw it wacky racers 70s era. Also. Okay. So I don't know. So this is my version of what Natasha uh and uh Boris and Natasha's spy vehicle almost because again isn't so grew in the minions kind of a stolen thing stolen valor if you will you, natasha you think natasha's the minions oh i'm just well in theory he she is his femme fatale she kind of does whatever he says darling who natasha right his lady oh you're okay in, you don't know who in she that, is show them the picture in that, someone else's drawing in, but in that scenario he's more the minion no that's nothing to do with size. He's very minion. -like. Don't you cannot don't put judge your books by it. You're saying small people can't be powerful. You heard it first, Itty B. <laughs> Send your cards and letters and comments to in care of Itty B at what's your uh, email address? No, <laughs> Mike Frucci is joining us. Evening, sketchy people. It's a beautiful 79 degrees here in Homo Sasa. Homo Sasa. Homo Sasa. <laughs> Maddie Bunce is joining us. Hello, everyone. Hey, Matt. Anyways, so Matavius Buntus. So, anyways, this is my version of what I think Boris and Natasha's spy vehicle would look like. And I'm just going to have to trust you because I, again, I remember, like when you showed me them today. I you remember you looked them. no, you looked absolutely. And then I showed you Rocky Bullwinkle, the cartoon, a little snippet, and you're like, I don't remember them at no, all. I didn't remember them at all. Yeah, no, Boris and Natasha, man. But I remembered the squirrel because of his teeth. I always thought he was the cutest thing with the big teeth, but I couldn't remember where he was. Well, from. everybody thought Rocky was cute. He is adorable. Here's what I didn't like about Rocky. What? I mean, he went on and he then he cheated on uh, Bullwinkle. And With he another moose? No, he, and then he, and he, then, he, then he married Adrian, and I wasn't happy. We got fights all the time. <laughs> it's a whole thing. There's like five or six movies that talk about. Rocky's <laughs> <laughs> Last night, when you're all slow mo running into me in the kitchen. <laughs> like, what is that? I'm doing Rocky. I'm doing Rocky. Um, Tracy Corfield said, I missed you. We missed you guys last week as well. We were a bit toyered. Actually, no, we weren't even home yet. No. Our flight got canceled and we wound up not coming home on Monday after all. So, yeah. So, happened. good thing we didn't decide to do a sketchy live and disappoint you folks. Right. Because it would have been, it would have been live at the airport and no, be we were beautiful. Excited. Beautiful. No, we were, we were back at your sister's house. Right. With the thought of having to get up at four. We had to get up at 3.30. Mm. We left at 4. Wasn't good. It wasn't. Uh, Mama Wood is joining us. Hello, Mom, Mom. She says, hi, my babies. I love you so much. We love you, too. Hey, Mom, say hello to the YouTubers. Hey. Is it, are we downgrading them by saying YouTubers? I also watch YouTube, so I, I guess I would be she's, she's a YouTube. Addressing all well, actually, videos. my mom watches a ton of YouTube, too. She does. Yeah. Hey, Mom, check us out on YouTube. Make sure you hit and like and subscribe. Do you hit like and subscribe or do you subscribe then hit like? Anyway. Either way. In any Either case, order. as Itty B's famous, My famous last line. One. Darling. That James Olchin is joining us. Jim O here from Lincoln, Nebraska. Welcome what back. What up, Jamie Olch? What up, Olch? Calling us sightseers. Oh my goodness. Can't wait to tell you stories of magnificent pizza. It's available. 
It's available. We will. We will tell you in just a moment. Uh, Robert Frost is joining us from Indiana. Welcome, sir. Um, Lizzie Daughtry is posting her Facebook page link. Nice. And her YouTube link. Okay. Um, Brian and Lisa McCoy are joining us. 87 and thunderstorms in Maurice, Louisiana. Yeah. We have also had some thunder. Been storms. thunderstruck. Yes. Yeah, we have been. Um, every time except last night. Yeah, we dodged that one. No, I'm talking about the lightning. Uh oh. <laughs> our bolts, wow. Our bolts did not win. You can't say our bolts and make a comment like that. Why? You don't. You don't talk about your team like that. I'm. I'm new. To I'm hockey. new. New to hockey. Anyway. All right, so let me zoom in on what Johnny's doing here real quick. We've got. Yeah, look at so we got huh. this. Boris will sit up here. So no pre-sketch tonight, guys. This no. is a uh, round the scratch. Boris sits up here. And Natasha. Oh, so it's like almost like a command central. But it's in the in the look. It's still kind of a, uh, a bombery, um, it's sort of like an airplane almost, missilely bomby kind of thing. Yeah. Nothing says bad guy like driving around in a missile. Right. <laughs> in fact, I might call this bad guy one. You might have to do Wiley e. Coyote and Roadrunner next. Right. Week. <laughs> why? 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 Wiley e. Coyote. Isn't he from? What's his name? What's that? Whose name? This is the best. Because <laughs> you're like, wait, did I say something wrong? Is it not Wiley? It is Wiley Coyote, but why would a Roadrunner be a bad guy? He wasn't. Marinate on that. He wasn't a bad guy. No, he wasn't. I think they were both just trying to survive. Is it trying to? Trying to survive. Draco is joining us. I was singing poorly on a live last week and got the copyright notice. Kind of made me proud. What? That's, I missed it. That's kind of cool. In the uh, stylings of? In the stylings of someone who's about to be jailed. <laughs> That's not what that means. What is the copyright notice? That just means, hey, you've, uh, you've been using copyrighted material. You can't do that. Because it was so similar. to. That's what they're original. saying. That's what they're yeah. saying. I missed it. Do you have a uh, a copy of it you can send us? Was this some Grand Funk Railroad? What were you singing? Uh, John Devers is joining us. Hello, guys. I'm here. I love the coop. Oh, from, for the shirt. We do have that shirt in full color right now, but Johnny's going to redo it, tighten it up a bit, and do a black and white. You should, I already like how it's coming out. Yeah. Yeah, it's really cool. Uh, Joe Burdett's joining us. Hello from Joe's Garage and hey, Joe. is it Soresco, Michigan? Pure Michigan? Pure Michigan. Pure Michigan. We'd like to come to Michigan someday. We were in Michigan. Michigan? Weren't we at weren't we in Detroit? No. No. Where were we? Chicago? Oh, Chicago. That's Illinois. Yeah. <laughs> we were in Michigan. <laughs> what? Why was I thinking of I Michigan? don't know. Oh, that's because it's near the Great Lakes. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> we were in the general vicinity. <laughs> don't spit. You've done that once before. Right? Oh my god, I almost lost it. That ruined your screen. Hey, you new to us at the U in the YouTube channel. Geography. Not a strong story. phenomenal speller. <laughs> phenomenal thesaurus. Knows definitions of word. Math whiz. Couldn't tell you where uh, Clearwater is. I know where Clearwater is. Yeah, we were in driving out of St. Pete. And you're like, where are we? Because I don't pay attention when you drive. You don't pay attention. I need to. It's horrible. Kevin Johnson joining us. Hello from Hud West, Darlin. Ooh, we got a Darlin. Nice. Joe Lombardo is joining what? us. What? Hey, guys. Jersey checking in. Guys. Guys. We hooked up with Joe Lombardo. What a time. Trenton. 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 When we went up to Jersey, um, and he took us to De Lorenzo's for the best The slice time. of a lifetime. Um, we had just come from breakfast and stuffed our faces, and we we each had two slices I, of this I, Yeah, I did. So I downed good. some pizza. So good. If you are in the Trenton area. Trenton. I would. I wish. Call Joe Lombardo, and he will go with you. Oh my goodness! I wish I hadn't eaten breakfast, and I would have uh, 
we had a, a way to take that pizza home. We could have taken it home. I know. I'm saying, saying I wish we had a way. We had dinner plans that night. Yeah. And you know what we have for dinner? Shitty pizza. That's what we have. <laughs> Remember at my sister. Oh. It wasn't. It wasn't good. good. Love you guys. What was that? Uh, if you're listening, but it wasn't good. Don't. Pizza. We don't want to talk crap about the pizza place, but it was not. Good. I don't remember what it was. It was not. It wasn't Delorazzo. after having that pizza. It wasn't Delorazzo. It was a let down. Dizzing. Yeah. Yes. Um, and it's such a fun time with Joe. What a, what a cool guy. Super down to earth. And um, it was really great meeting him. I'm so glad we went. Absolutely. It was cool. So, Joe, thanks for, again for meeting up with us and being so gracious. Such a cool host and uh, showing us your, your area and, of course, the pie. Yes. It was great. What are we th- what are we thinking of the uh what are we thinking of bad guy one here? Let's see. I'm gonna zoom in a bit. Zoom in a bit. One now, what are all those uh spoilers or this back here? No. This? Uh the blower, maybe. What yeah. Yeah, it's a blower. It's a mid engine. Oh. Engine's in the middle. Okay. Well, uh-huh. I'm sure it's gonna take And then, and then just like the Batmobile. I can't quite make it out. There's a fin. Well, that and then back here, rocket power. Oh. Yeah. Well, you have to because it's a. Uh, well, it's a missile. It's a missile. What's the difference between a missile and a rocket? Um, rocket. Yeah. Satellite of love. Um, yeah. <laughs> is the missile also a satellite of love? I don't think so. It's more of a satellite of hate if you're bombing someone, right? <laughs> Bad guy. Bad guy mobile. One. Mike Ferrucci said, must be the work of Moose and Squirrel. Moose and Squirrel. Hello. <laughs> Let me introduce myself. I am. That was his famous. Every time he. Hey, Bullwinkle. Oh, gee, Rocky. <laughs> oh, gee, Rock. Or Bullwinkle. <laughs> and he'd always say that, too. Gosh, Bullwinkle. Sure wish we could get to the place we need to go. Bullwinkle, do you think we can get there? Gee, Rock, I don't know. Ah, oh, Bullwinkle. It's only like, a, yeah. like if you watched an episode and you drank every time he said Bullwinkle. Oh my God. <laughs> yeah. we gotta do oh, let's totally do it. Oh, we need to do a happy hour Zoom and then do like split screen with, with very, very much of the different times of the Rocky Bullwinkle show. Yes, darling. Silly. It is silly. Silly, silly. Celine Dion. Tracy said, it's 120 rows of love on my afghan. As soon as I find the right size box, I will get it and the hats in the mail. Oh, because he, he's sending us hats. Oh, right on. My sleep cap, I think. Nice. Tom Walters, hello. Tom from New Jersey. What's up, Tom? Hey, Tom. Thanks for joining us. Yeah. Um, Spud Anderson is joining us from the Spud. Pacific Northwest. Hey guys, good to see you. We can only hang out for a little bit, but want us to tune in. Aw, we love you guys. Yep. Hope all's well with the family and you're enjoying your summer vacation. Um, Raphael VW. Hi, family. Love you. Raphael. Guys. Combo power. Raphael. Miss you, buddy. Where have you been? He's been out. He's been out and about. He's traveling all man. over the place. He's a traveling man. He must have the whole summer off. Good for you. Mofongo power for sure. Mm-hmm. Uh, Draco said he was probably singing seventies rock. That's my jam. I love seventies rock. Um, do you? I do. Hmm. It's classic. You yeah. are a. Uh, I do like classic. Rock. What's the uh, what's the? Um, uh, forget it. <laughs> you're gonna you're gonna make fun of me. I was gonna make fun of you. <laughs> of course I was. Would uh, this not be the right show to do that? James Olsen said you have only started, and I love it. Awesome. Okay. So he's already digging it. Uh, Joe Lombardo said, um, in the little playground in Chicago. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, we uh, we shared with Joe. Yes, uh, we and, did. And we've shared on the broadcast before the time that we went to Chicago. And I brought Johnny to Millennium Park, mm. which wound up being. Not the famous one. Not the famous. Not the bean. Not, not the, the bean. bean. No. Uh, Different millennium. Oh, no, definitely had some trouble finding the bean. <laughs> <laughs> you don't always, but, well, hey. but that trip, you, we did. 
Robert E. Lee says good evening. What's up? You're welcome, sir. Well, they um, did that in like a vampire voice. Joe Lombardo said that's right. One T and Trenton. 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 He is Trenton. Trenton. <laughs> he said you guys are awesome. We love you, Joe. It was fun times, man. It Thank was. you so much. Uh, James Alton said, careful, Ian will want to build it. One could only hope. Right? He says in an evil voice. <laughs> Oh, this old thing? Oh, Joe Lombardo said six inches, rocket and missile. Oh. That's the difference. Rocket missile, <laughs> six inches. Oh, Hank Dutton said shout out to the McCoys helping me get the dub working. Yeah, what? yeah, he's got his V dub uh, running. That's really cool. making friends. I they do. It. it does happen here on Sketchy it. Live. Uh, John Devery said, drink uh, every time the coyote gets hurt. Bet you can't watch for two hours. You're probably right. I am a bit of a lightweight. Although. In the community. In the community. <laughs> Although. Although what? I've been known to hold my own here lately. I've been doing better. I guess the more you the more you do down some, you. Uh, <laughs> you hey, for you up. kids at home, just to let you know. He got it. <laughs> <laughs> All right, I'm going to zoom you in while I read some fun facts here. Johnny so graciously printed this out so I would have something to talk about tonight since I don't have a real familiarity of the show. Which is crazy to me that you don't have a familiarity. I'm, I am trying to think of what I would have been watching in place of this. I don't know. You How? Yeah. I mean, you said it was on Saturday mornings. That was my... Yeah, and there's, there's The Adventures of Rocky and Bullwinkle. Then there was a Rocky and Bullwinkle show. And I want to say there was another adaptation like in the later 80s, 90s, where they redid it, reanimated re, uh, it. And... Is it possible Tom and Jerry was on? It would have been during. the same block, is what I think. I don't think so. I could be wrong. I don't think, I mean, without referencing my TV guide, I don't know. <laughs> What's that? And this would have been, because it says here, um, it was an animated cartoon from 59 to 64. So yeah. way before my time, it would have been. Okay, so I guess I'm old. Well, you were you were born in 69. Yeah, I know. So it, you were watching reruns as well. It wasn't It wasn't airing when you were alive. So these would have been reruns. I, I have no idea where it would have been aired that I missed it because I don't remember watching it faithfully. I would have remembered. Hmm. Um, but it was, I bet you did. Um, I bet you did, and you just don't don't remember it as much as. Why wouldn't I have found it just as funny as? I don't know because it's Tom you know maybe it's just not your kind of humor. Because it is, it's really like, it's super it's super simple to follow. It wasn't like elaborate pranks on uh, Rock Bullwinkle, and really just like the Road Runner and uh, they were always getting foiled. Ah, foilage. foiled again. Foilage. foilage. Um, so Boris Badenov. Badenov, that's correct. Is an antagonist of the 1959 and 1964 animated cartoon Rocky and His Friends and the Rocky Bullwinkle Show, collectively referred to as the Rocky and Bullwinkle Show for short. He was originally voiced by Paul Fries. Um, Badenov's name is a pun on that of the 16th century Russian Tsar? Tsar. Tsar. Boris Godunov. Godunov. His accent and explosive temper are an homage to Hollywood actor Akeem Tamarov. Though you love, you do this accent quite I love it. Actually. <laughs> <laughs> you do this without it's one of It's one of my favorite it is. Uh, accents to do. Like you were so excited when, uh, when Gru was developed. Of, of course. Because that was like, you were like, oh, this is my guy. The evil genius bad guy with the, like, the kind of a, not Russian, but very much a, that, you know. That side of the world. Eastern world's. European yes. or whatever you want to call it. Uh, and then, of course, you know, hey, listen, our uh, our really cool lady at the uh, at Coles oh. the other day. <laughs> <laughs> our Coles trip. Yeah. Yeah. She also. Hey, you two. How did she say? It didn't sound like that. <laughs> I don't know what hey, you do. What's that? <laughs> hey, you do. <laughs> oh, my goodness. And he's just such the typical, like, 
I could see like a Danny DeVito playing that character. You would think they would have casted that into the um, camera stay. Uh, casted someone like that in his in uh, to do that character, right? Yeah. Uh, no. And they did make a movie of it. They did make a movie of it. Um, Boris is a spy from the fictional nation of Potsylvania. Potsylvania, that's correct. Why is everything a vania? Do you remember like the Adams family? Yeah. Transylvania. Well, because that would be, you know, when you're looking at a a vampire or whatever. Well, how does Potsylvania? Because they couldn't say Transylvania. I'm sure it was trademarked in some way. Why? Why? They're not vampires. I don't know. She looks a little vampire. She does look vampire. <laughs> is that a word? <laughs> I don't know if vampire is a word. Um, so Boris is a spy from that fictional nation and takes orders from a strong man known as Fearless Leader. Fearless Leader, that Did is they correct. Ever show? Uh the fearless leader, yes. Um, he was kind of a, a generally looking dude, I want to say. And then there was the head guy, which is that Mr. Big. Mr. Big. Now he was always a shadow. Oh, it said yes, and occasionally the rarely seen Mr. Big. Right. Huh. Boris's missions range from trying to steal a secret rocket fuel formula to eliminating all television from the United States. <laughs> so in the episode you showed me, and the it, what I love, and this is just it's the funniest thing because all cartoons are like this. Like we were talking about Roadrunner and the Coyote, mm-hmm. um, and you talk about like Tom and Jerry. The the antagonist is the same in every episode, just in different disguises, correct? And different clothing. Which I think is terrible. How are they not seeing it's the same person? That's so funny. I mean, she's she's pretty distinctly her and he's obviously distinctly him well he's so, he's got he's got the on. same accent i know he's you saw the one where he was he was dressed as a travel agent is that what that episode? yeah he basically put a hawaiian lay on himself and what you were showing me was like like a five or ten minute clip were these half hour shows like half hour uh no or the, smaller well it was the small ones and then they break away to a different like why different it would be um tom slick would then be played and then they'd play like a um who else is on that one? I want to say maybe maybe a Georgia of the Jungle. And then they would pop back to the second the second part of the that. So the How episode kids remember? So the so the episode itself was broken half with some cartoons in between because it was a show. So it was like a half hour cartoon show, right? And the first before the first commercial. You'd have the first part, and then they'd play another cartoon, and then they'd play another cartoon. And now we come back to the second part of the Rocky Bullwinkle in this episode. I guess it was promoting memory, because I mean, that's why, did why that... I didn't watch it. Because <laughs> yeah. I had to remember what that's happened true. five minutes ago. Who's going to follow that? We're talking about kids here. Jeez. Jeez. Um, let's see. John Devery's got it. Um Tom Walter said, did Boris and Natasha steal rocket fuel from Bullwinkle? It was part of his mission. I don't know if he ever succeeded. Did the bad well, they, guy ever win? They were always trying. No, they never won. Okay. They were always trying to steal something from somebody. Um, it says here that he also tried to start his own organized crime gang and hiring himself out as a professional executioner. And frequently conspiring schemes simply to get rich, such as by posing as a Hollywood director yes. who built Bullwinkle out of his life savings. Well, at one point, uh, Rocky inherited um, had inherited a uh, a mine, so they're outside. Oh no! It's and it's a landmine field, and so Bullwinkle's over there digging up. Oh look, Rocky! It's really easy to find these things. Oh no! <laughs> Boom. So Rocky was the voice of reason. Always. And Bullwinkle was. Is a moron. <laughs> Leave them. Yeah, I'm just calling it like I see it. Leave them. I'm going to zoom in on what you're drawing here because when you showed me the cartoon, this chick looks pretty scary. Like she was not feminine at all. And the depiction that uh, you printed out over there from another artist and then what you're doing here, she's a little bit more feminine. But in the trying in the cartoon uh she was like a stick figure no real curves 
I've also made her uh, appear to have made her neck way too. Um... Her boob is shooting out way too. Well, you gotta have some boobs. Oh, She's an evil genius. She's an evil genius pinup girl. That's right. Is what's happening. <laughs> this is we had to modernize her a little bit. That's funny. Um, separately from the television series, a commercial for the Rocky Bullwinkle show featuring Boris established that he was an active member of Local 12 of the Villains, Thieves, and Scoundrels Union. <laughs> <laughs> well, he pulls out a card and it That's says funny. it's a PT, PT, PT card. PT? PTA card. And it was p- pickpockets, thieves, and something. Uh, <laughs> it's, and, and so well, think about that because unions were such a big deal. Back in this time, mm-hmm. um, I remember like Flintstone. That was a whole union thing. As right. Well. And probably Jetsons as well. Mm, possibly. Uh, during this commercial, Boris also claims to be the world's greatest no good Nick. Yes, go- no good Nick. Boris is also quite proud of the fact that the nicest thing Fearless Leader ever did for him was sending a picture of himself to Boris inscribed, Drop Dead Fearless Leader. He's a master of disguise and aliases. Uh, clearly, since uh, Rocky Bullwinkle didn't know who he was each time, he just put a mask on. <laughs> Let me well, zoom in. Again, no one said that Rocky and Bullwinkle were, or uh, Boris and Natasha were super smart. Aren't they? That's so funny. Now, where does she come in? Let's see. Um, early in the series, Boris was taller and had red eyes. After the first episode, he changed to his normal height, but still retained the red eyes until a few episodes afterwards. Do you ever see in those episodes? No, those were like early, early ones. Super early. Yeah. Humorously, they changed from red to white after he'd woken up from a long slumber, as if the redness was caused by sleep deprivation. Because <laughs> they had a little deppy dep. Boris is nearly always accompanied by his fellow criminal, Natasha Fatal. Fatal? Fatal. Yeah. First time he appeared without her was in the story arc Buried Treasure. The first story arc where neither appeared was the Three Musketeers. So they were pretty much in every. Did you see the Three Musketeers episode? Uh, I don't know if I did. So in the show, are they boyfriend girlfriend or? Oh, they're definitely together. Well, how do you know? I mean, was there a romance? She calls him darling. Oh, she he does? calls him. She, he calls her Liebchen. Oh, kitten. Kitten? Mm-hmm. Oh, see, now that's a that's a throwback to mm-hmm, uh, mm-hmm. Adam's family. Because he used to use words like Yes. That. Uh, again, probably a little stealing from characters. And look at look at I'm this. not saying that... Well, when, when did that come out? The original Adam's family? Was it before or after this? Mm-hmm. I am going to look it up. Because uh, if you look at her compared to her, her man there... Mm-hmm. Size difference in Adam's mm-hmm. family. So who stole from who? Right. I'm gonna say the Adam's family. Yeah, um, Adam's family original. Let's see. Um, 1964, and this was 1960. It was right about the same time. 1959 to 1964. 59. 59 to 64. So before. So this. So Adam's family was 64. So who came first? The chicken or the egg? Well, who did? It was uh, Bullwinkle came first. Right. Because Gomez was a little bit smaller and mm. Morticia was a little bit taller. Very much. And I wish I was a baller. <laughs> smaller, taller, baller. What the... <laughs> <laughs> well, there she is. She's hanging oh, out in the let back. Me get it, let me get it. Let me get it. Oh, so you've got her in the back with the guns. With the guns. Sweet. She's got the guns. Literally with... and figuratively. Right. <laughs> <laughs> All right, now the hard part. What's that? Doing him? To draw. Let me have that first page. That's a much better uh, representation of the original, um, the original Boris. Boris. Okay, so this is kind of fun. <clears throat> well, actually, let me read some more here first. Um, let's see. Bob McLaren said the Roadrunner was the best. I did enjoy Roadrunner. Yeah, I liked Roadrunner too. All the Acme uh, stuff yes. was awesome. Love it. Um, it, yeah, it was. I was secretly rooting for. Well, of course. Coyote. Of course. Who didn't want the Coyote to win? 
Yeah, me too. And it was it wasn't until I moved out to Arizona that I realized the significance of hey, Coyote and the Roadrunner. Oh. Before I was just like, oh, he's after him, but I didn't realize he was trying to eat him. You know what I mean? Yeah, he was hungry. I know. I don't. I guess I just never put two and two together. So, um, Tracy Corkell said, my eye doctor told me with these new glasses, you'll see great. After reading my Bible five minutes, I look up and see double. Now she blames the glasses. I hope I get me sight right. Get me sight right soon. Well, if you're seeing double of Bible verses, that's not too bad. Tracy. Hey, you're getting extra <laughs> Bible, right? That's good. Um, let's see. Hank said Jimmy Neutron was a good cartoon, same as Dexter's Laboratory. So they're very similar. I guess I've never watched either of those. I've never watched any of those either. Those are pretty modern uh, type stuff. We're old. Hank, young guy. Right? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, my kids probably watch Jimmy Neutron. I, I would. I could imagine your kids watching Jimmy Neutron and probably. those well, kinds of... Had we had cable and all. Right, you were poor. Yeah, I was poor. So. Poor. <laughs> Joe Lombardo said Pottstown, Pennsylvania. I don't know what the reference is from because it was a while back, but um, it was about ten minutes ago. So maybe that's where the actual pizza place is at. No, we didn't go to Pennsylvania. We were in New Jersey. <laughs> what are you talking about? What are you talking? Um, Hank said while while back, I watched this video that said when these cartoons came out, they were meant to brainwash kids into thinking certain locations like Russia, Canada, and other locations. If you look at when the cartoons came out and what was going on in the world, it kind of lines up. It was a show that makes you think. Interesting. Again, probably why I didn't watch it. If it wasn't just for pure entertainment and I had to put any pieces together whatsoever, I, it probably, I probably lost interest, I would imagine. Uh, Tom Walter said they tried to steal the formula for Mooseberry rocket fuel from Bullwinkle. So well, then he. Uh, why did Bullwinkle have a lot of fuel? Well, because he's a moose. And... <laughs> that makes a ton of sense. Were they making it from moose juice? I don't know. Ooh, maybe. Maybe. It was mooseberry rocket fuel. I don't know. That's moose. Was it moose juice? Guys, by the way, I'm wearing my beanie. And I know it's old news because I wear it a lot, but I'm also wearing my Johnny Jalopy. Um, sketchy live sweatshirt oh nice hoodie which we don't have available right yet now, but i want to say we're going to do it yeah in the next couple months in fact while they're on sale we're going to grab some and um make these available again we did have a few that we sent out um it was a short run but um i think we we should make them available because i will tell you what it's it's Florida. It's 90 degrees here right now. Super hot, super hot, super humid, but chilly in the house because we have the air on. And I am comfy and cozy. So just want to throw that out there. Hey, where can you um, get those? Yeah, you can get it. Well, beanies are available now. Anytime we have we have those in stock. And of course, the Johnny Jalopy hats that Johnny's wearing, the Johnny Jalopy T-shirts that Johnny's wearing. You've got on what tonight? A monster, Johnny a monster, Jalopy monster shirt. The monster. Such an interesting monster. Mike Frucci said cartoons weren't actually made for kids. It was for adults to help escape from reality. I believe it. I believe it. Still works. Hank said, yes, I used to watch tunes all the time that I had kids and now it's only Barbie. Blah. Uh -huh. <laughs> Paul Marziani is joining us. Welcome, Paul, from Bradenton, Florida. I think he's there today. Shaggy Lavalanque is joining us. Welcome, sir. Draco said, va 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 boom, best looking Natasha ever. <laughs> she does look way better in the drawing here than she did in the cartoon. <laughs> the McCoy said, Ivana Humpelot's character on Austin Powers was modeled after Natasha. Oh. Ivana Humpelot? Yeah. Humpelot. That's funny. Robert Spear is joining us. Hello, sir. Uh, we, were, we were trying to get. Uh, in with Robert Spear when we were in Jersey too, and we just ran out of time. So, apologies again. Uh, next time for sure. Yeah. Totally. You'll have to uh, meet us up in Trenton for that pizza. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Draco said she has major guns. Yes, she does. We're making sure she did. 
Robert D. Del Castillo. Hello, Sketchy. It's 84 in Honolulu. What is up? Hi. Aloha. Aloha. For sure. Mahalo for joining us. Yes. Much mahalo. Much. Mucho mahalo. Mucho mahalo. <laughs> We were just talking about taking a We were just out talking out. about that. Just the two of us. Just the two of us. We can make it if we try. Just the two of us. You and I. <laughs> Bob McLaren said only one episode that had the coyote talking. See, and that's what I think too. Again, Saturday morning cartoons in my house. My dad. Uh, a Ruled marine, the roost. A Marine. We had to keep it low. Tom and Jerry, you could watch with no sound, and it still made sense. And I bet you that's why I watched it. Oh, uh, okay. Is there a lot of dialogue in Rocky and It's Bowling all Bowling? dialogue. See? Lots of talking. Tom and Jerry. Because you had the narrator in this episode, Rocky and Bullwinkle. Yeah. We find our two heroes walking into the town of Sweetwater, Michigan. That kind of thing. Oh, gee, Rocky, what are we going to do about the pool It show? doesn't even say who narrated it. Or maybe it does. I'll have to look. Are you done with him? Yeah. Um, yeah, so I'm wondering if maybe subconsciously I watched things with no sound. Mm. Do you think that might be it? Yeah, it would explain a lot of things, actually. That's crazy. Why you don't it read? Could, it could explain why I'm deaf today. Well, it explains why you don't read things. Maybe. Because <laughs> <laughs> you're like, I have no time for that. Right? Because it was no closed caption then, or at least you didn't have it. Robert Spears said, "Can I throw out the Ren and Stimpy show?" Oh, uh, see now, don't I've throw it out. It. We love that show. I think he's throwing it out for discussion. I've heard of Ren and Stimpy. I want to say Dylan watched it. My you, son Dylan. You heard of Ren and Stimpy? You don't know Ren and Stimpy. I don't know. Are they Log? Mice? Are they mice? You don't know Log? <laughs> I don't. Oh my goodness. I've heard of Ren and Stimpy, but if I had to. If I had to tell you what they were, were they animals? Yeah. I don't know what they were. I Stimpy see. food. A raccoon? Ren was a chihuahua, and Stimpy was a like a dog, regular dog. Oh, they were dogs? Yeah. I've missed. What a boring life you led <laughs> for me. <laughs> you are so uncultured. Oh wow. This is crazy. You are like, like what? What? Pop culture. So I'm so okay. Listen, okay. We can watch together. It's the best. I bet you, if I were to call my sister right now, you probably would hate it because and you ask go, her if she watched what Instinct? cartoons we. I I'm telling you. Wait, how much older is your sister? She's five years older. Okay. I mean, maybe she wasn't. Watching. She wasn't watching cartoons then. So my, my she might have been, you know, watching maybe a little Sean Cassidy, a little I'm Partridge sure. Family. See, family. I watched what they watched. So at the age of eight, she was already 13, and I wanted to be like her. Right. And I was doing stuff that she was doing. I think. Smoking, I drinking. Just, I was. I started smoking when I was in seventh grade. Yep, see? I don't know. Maybe you were just too know. adult for it. I you might know? have been. You thought you were too cool for school. Must have been. Uh, Joe Lombardo you were too busy said, going. Pennsylvania. Oh, Pottsville. That's what he was doing. You were too busy getting, uh, going. Come on over here, stud. Robert Spears said, Pottstown Rumble. <laughs> Mike Fruji said, hey, Rocky, watch me pull a rabbit out of my hat. Again. <laughs> Nothing up my sleeve. <laughs> and then his hat would blow up. Oh, geez. So there were some catchphrases. Um, Boris's main catchphrase, spoken when frustrated, is what? Um, uh, uh, go ahead. It's Raskolnikov. Okay. Raskolnikov. Raskolnikov. Okay. It, do you remember him saying that? No. <laughs> <laughs> this was his main catchphrase. Huh. It's spoken in his Pennsylvania accent, a mock Russian accent. Right, mock Russian. Boris would also say, shut up your mouth to Natasha when his schemes failed. Mm -hmm. However, in the final segment. Because she would always call him out. Classic. Uh, Lady. So she would go along with this game. She never had any input or opinion. Well, you saw the thing when Classic they got. You saw. You saw him when she got in the rocket. Boris, what do you do? I must calculate the angle in which we shoot this rocket. 
the, oh, the four times two carry right. over six. And then he she gives it to her and he's all, oh no. And she he tells her, he tells, she tells him how he calculated wrong, and then the thing blows up. So she and then as they're it. floating down, she's pointing out that he failed. Classic. Maybe had he listened to her or let her speak, perhaps. <laughs> Perhaps. So he says, Natasha, next time I get fiendish plan, do me big favor. Shut up on my mouth. Mm -hmm. She does indeed do this in one episode, saying those very words to Boris as the car they were in dropped over a cliff to the ground in the eight segmented story arc, The Treasure of Montezuma. Nice. Eight story arc. Get that? So that's the cool thing about the show as well, is it wasn't, it was almost like Batman. That was the best thing of Batman. <laughs> Was that you would watch the episode and it never ended. You were always tuning in. What's going to happen next? Did they have to be watched in succession? Yeah. That's how they reeled you in. That's the way you knew so, every Saturday. So oh. it's like a soap opera then for kids. Sure. Do you want to get soapy about it? Hank said, it's log. It rolls downstairs and over the chairs and even the neighbor's dog. It's log. Log. Alone. It's fun for a girl and a boy. I've never heard Alone of it. and in pairs. What was the log? Rolls down the stairs. Log. log. <laughs> it's log. Hmm? An actual log. Nope. I don't believe it. When they had a horse that would talk at the end. It was great. Never. I've never watched it. Tom Walter said. And see, Ren, or sorry, Stimpy had a collection of rare and incurable diseases and Stimpy was See always the chihuahua mm -hmm. Ren? chihuahuas are always sick looking like they're always he's a rat Stimpy was the dog so Ren oh. was always a you idiot you stupid fool oh I do look and he had his hands up all the time I kind of remember seeing him it's great when you just did that <laughs> He looks like him. I believe Bob Camp is the uh, artist. Well, that I don't know. Yep. Tom Walter said, hey, how about the ant and aardvark? Do you remember that one? Yes, anteater. I want to be an anteater. That was from Ren and Simpy? No, I don't believe so. But there was a, I think Henny Youngman might have been the voice of the anteater. Oh, geez. You do all these things with an anteater. I don't know. Was it Henny Youngman? Anyone? Anne eater Anyone? in the yard bar. Yeah. How are you making out here? Oh, look at him up front. That looks great. Come on. I love it. I almost don't necessarily want to color it, but I think we'll, we'll put a little. What color would it be? I don't know. I mean, it wasn't. Was everything black and white back then? No, it was colorized. Oh, okay. But um, John I, I got to say, like I was showing you, uh, the animation and the artwork was not. Phenomenal. They were banging. They were banging it out. So you could really tell it was a lot of very simple. Shots. animated sets and, and the way even the way they like i think the best drawn part of the whole thing was the way how cute rocky was but bowling mm -hmm. half the time looked like garbage he was a little <laughs> the way his fur was was a just fuzzy in a couple i mean it, through, through, like his fur was just basically this that was how they drew his fur just oh. <laughs> stupid moose very spotty yeah that's funny John Dever said, Ren, want to see my booger collection? What? Ah, geez, Ren. Tracy Corkle said, have fun, kids. Love you guys. I got to hit the hay. Ah, oh, Trace. I'll get the Afghan and the hat to the mail soon. Much love to everyone. Hey. Tracy, have a good evening. Super evening, man. In. Uh, Mike Frucci said, Eddie, I just sent you a video on Messenger. You'll have to watch it. I sure will. Thank you. Um, Hank said, your main camera is going bad. What? No. Repeat your video. It was uh, it was just a little spotty. Just a little spotty. Or maybe we're running out of juice. It's well, a little spotty. Oh yeah, it is spotty. Yeah, it's uh. Go flashing. to. Oh, let me take a look. Let's double check our uh, feed here. It might be the connection. Check your connection there. Might be battery. Um, it okay through here. Yeah, it's uh, doing some funky stuff over here. Oh, it's doing some funky stuff. You see it? Yeah. Oh, it's, it's that's reflecting. No, double check your. No. It's on. 
Hmm. All right, is it still doing it? Yeah. Shit. Um, All right. Well, so then we'll just go to your screen. Just finish it up then. Okay. All right, so we are going to focus it. I was going to tell you to do green. That's perfect. That's great. Thank you for the heads up, Hank. I noticed that too, but I wasn't sure what it was. Um, Lizzie said, I love the art, the aardvark and the ants. Um, Hank said, a pixelated line is showing up at the bottom. Yep, we saw that. So we're just going to, we're going to write it out here on Johnny's screen. He's just putting in the color right now. So we're not too far from this being completed. So we appreciate you guys who are sticking And again, we're just, we're going to just kind of muddle through now there is a whole uh right up here on natasha too and it says uh she's an antagonist in the animated show as well um she's a spy for the fictional country of Pennsylvania as well so they are both spies and she takes orders from the leader as well so she really wasn't taking orders from him he was a fellow spy hey, she takes orders from him that's not what she's a fellow to. spy she usually serves as an accomplice to fellow spy boris that is an, what's an accomplice working with him okay equal opportunity yes yes no it, it, he definitely was in charge okay uh let's see they did a musical <laughs> of this uh she's supposedly the only child in her oh She's the only child of Axis Sally and Count Dracula, so she is vampiric. Oh. That is why. A former Miss Transylvania, she was expelled from college for subversive subversive activities at a local cemetery. Did they really create this backstory in the you sure, show? I'm sure this is not part of the movie. I don't know. Oh, this is all the stuff I got you, so maybe not. She traveled from Transylvania to the United States at the age of 19, landing in New York, where she spent two years posing for cartoonist Charles Adams, and as the party girl who pops out of the big cake at at the embal embalmer stag parties. Yeah, I don't think this is from the <laughs> cartoon. <laughs> oh, my God. Was there, Did you never watch the movie then? No. That's so funny. I did not. Oh, here we go. Creator Bill Scott modeled Boris and Natasha after two of Adam's original characters from his cartoons, who were later named Gomez and Morticia. Adams. Okay, that's true. They were cartoons first. Yeah. So, as suspected, you look are at that. a gene. Look put at you. That together before I even read that. Look at you. You're a genius. I'm a gene. She met Boris when they were arrested for throwing rocks at Girl Scouts. Yeah, this this is not the cartoon. But it um, gives you a little bit of background on what they were thinking, I guess, on where she came from and where they uh, mm. got together. Um, it says, usually Natasha and Natasha's and Boris's misties are thwarted by Rocky the Flying Squirrel and Bullwinkle the Moose. She refers to them collectively as Moose and Squirrel. Moose and Squirrel. <laughs> She's almost always shown in a purple dress, but in the last season it's often red. Ooh. Um, her last name is a pun on the phrase femme fatale, which emphasizes on the fatal part. In keeping with that, Natasha was drawn as a shapely, attractive-looking woman. Uh, I don't know <laughs> what cartoon they're looking at, because when what you showed me, she was neither of them, actually. It says that in most of the episodes, the character is identified only as Natasha with no surname. Um, let's see... Yeah, there's a whole thing. This thing went on for quite a while, actually. Do you think it's still airing? You know how there's those uh, channels that air all the old stuff? I wonder. Maybe. Probably Cartoon Network might have it. Um, Although I got to say with the accents and the thing, I don't. I bet maybe you. Maybe not. Maybe not. Interesting. In the 2000 theatrical film, The Adventures of Rocky and Bullwinkle, the live action Natasha was portrayed by Renee Russo. Oh, okay. I would not have picked her. Wasn't Renee Russo the one that was in uh, Outbreak or something with the monkey? I don't know. That, <laughs> that brought the uh, disease to the United States. I want to say that was Renee Russo. And Too in close two, to home. In 2014, DreamWorks animation short film Rocky and Bullwinkle, Lori Frazier provided the voice for Natasha. 2018 Amazon video series, The Adventures of Rocky and Bullwinkle. She's voiced by Rachel Bajit. So even as recent as a couple of years ago, there's stuff going on about these people, Rocky and Bullwinkle, and mm -hmm. I still have never seen it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. 
Like this is like a fifty year old saga. Show. Yeah. yeah, this yeah. is crazy. Yeah, you're really out of the loop, aren't you? I am. That's insane. I guess I'm gonna have to go back and watch it. I think we're gonna leave it just with this funness right here. That does look good. Just a little quick, you know. Joe Lombardo said, glad you guys are back. Love the show. We are happy to be back, Joe, although I'd probably rather be in Jersey eating pizza. <laughs> we could have done the drawing from De Lorenzo. Right? How cool would that have been? Rick Rennick is joining us. Just tuned in. Awesome. Boris Badenov and Natasha Patel. Uh, Natasha says, you are so bad. You're good. You are so bad. You're good. And then he says, it's good to be bad. It's good to be bad. <laughs> Gavin Little said, hi, guys. Better hey. late than never. What a cool design. Thanks, Gavin. Thanks for tuning in. Uh, Hank said, now that I think of it, they remind me of Plankton and Hair Computer Wife. What? He's just throwing cartoons out. They're always trying to steal the secret formula from Mr. Krabs, but each time the plans get foiled and his wife always tells him what he does wrong. What is Plankton and Hair Computer Wife? Is that from SpongeBob, maybe? Which I don't, I've never watched either. Have you ever seen it? Uh-uh. Hank said, Don't forget to subscribe to Johnny's YouTube channel. Oh, dang it. We didn't do a good job New there, did we? Content coming soon. Hank has been working feverishly with a fever, feverishly with a fever to um, upload all of our season five uh, shows to YouTube. So please go check it out. Leave a yes. comment if you would. And Tell if you're your watching friends. us and you're watching right now on Facebook or, um, YouTube. YouTube. Please leave a comment if you'd like. If you have any questions. You got questions? We got answers. We got answers. Lizzie said absolutely amazing. She loves it. Uh, Joe Lombardo said Rene Russo, Dr. Roberta Keo in Outbreak. I knew it. I knew it. See, there are some things. I I know like the stupidest movie trivia. Right. (laughs) I knew that, but I don't know normal stuff. Uh, Mike Bruce, she said, looks awesome. Steve Shower is joining us. That's awesome. What are you drawing on, Johnny? This is what is it, babe? It is drawing in the app Sketchable. Um, Johnny is actually a featured uh, Sketchable artist. I am a featured. Uh, well, I'm not a. F- I'm featured, but I'm a yes. What's it called? It's a feature. Wow. What am I? <laughs> <laughs> You I'm a are, I'm a sketchable artisan. Artisan. Sorry, artisan new at it. Artist, yes. Yeah, it's we're new. new we're new. New designation. <laughs> don't don't hate me. So it's in the sketchable app on the Microsoft Surface Book. Surface Book three. Wow. Yeah. If I only knew what it was. I know. <laughs> um, Rick Remick said, Natasha says, "You are so bad. You're good." Boris said, "It's so good to be bad." Yeah. Um, Russ Randall's joining us. Hi, all. Very cool. Russ, I'm What's wondering up? if, um, which one was the squirrel? Rocky. Rocky. I'm wondering if um, Rocky would enjoy one of your picnic tables. Probably would. <laughs> you probably would. Russ Randall made me a squirrel picnic table for my tree, and they actually sit at it and eat at it. It's so cool. They do that. That's for sure. I'm so appreciative of that, Russ. That was such a cool thing for you to do. Um, Hank said, yes, it's SpongeBob, stupid autocorrect, Plankton and his computer wife. Ah, okay. Okay. Uh, Lizzie said, I love the YouTube videos. Well, thank Um, you. Doc said, where's the squirrel? Uh, We're just doing Natasha and Boris in this one. There's no squirrel. No squirrel in this one. No moose. No moose. Moose. When I hear that, I think of uh, a moose. I don't know. What are you? It's uh, uh-huh. King of Queens. <laughs> they call him Moose. Oh. How <laughs> oh, funny. Well, this is a fun one. So you're doing a little extra black, looks like. Guys, this print's going to be available for 20 bucks. Who who else is drawing this stuff? No one. I don't, I don't know if anybody's really going and drawing stupid cartoon. With cars. With mm. a made-up car that they could possibly be in. <laughs> Look at it. Is that really? Yep, that is his smile. That is so funny. What a kooky guy, huh? I'm I'm definitely going to have to watch this now. 
it sounds like something that everyone else has seen. I'm the only one who mm-hmm. hasn't seen it. Way behind the ball. And if they're short, now can you watch just this? Is it just like all clips that you found? What were you looking yeah. at? They have it on YouTube? Yep. Huh. So just little clips of this. I don't have to watch the whole thing where they're putting George of the Jungle in and everything no, like that. Just, just George rocky. in the Jungle, I do remember seeing. It's Rocky Bullwinkle. But they also had a catchy song. Was there a catchy song at the opening of this? Did they have a Well, it's theme Rocky song? Bullwinkle. It's not the Boris Natasha show. I know. What is the Rocky and Bullwinkle theme song? There's not a theme song. So again, that's probably why I didn't watch it. She didn't like that it didn't have a theme song. Yeah. I don't know. Lizzie said you will love it, Itty B. Yeah, I probably will. Um, Rick said that would be Rocky and Bullwinkle. Yeah, so I I don't know why I've never seen this. This it it's baffling me. This and a lot of the other ones you guys mentioned when we were doing the, the Jetsons drawing. I mean, I, I get it if there were, th- like, there was a girl in this one, though, and then there was a squirrel. I would have totally watched it if I knew there was a squirrel. But, like, I don't understand why I didn't see it. I don't know. So weird. Steve Shower said, Johnny, come to Bakersfield and uh, race slot cars with us on Wednesday night. Oh, my God. That'd be so much fun. Track time hobbies. I will supply you with everything you need. You would love to, We would love to have you. He would love to be in Bakersfield. <laughs> on the uh, streets of Bakersfield, for streets. sure. Hank said, so someone drew the Jetsons last week. They are on one of those Facebook drawing groups. I'm like, huh, looks like someone is watching you. <laughs> I always feel like somebody's watching me and I have no privacy. <laughs> oh, oh, oh. <laughs> I always feel that someone is watching me. Uh, Doc said, my brother had two cats named after them, and we would love to say, where is the squirrel? And the two cats would run like crazy. Oh. <laughs> mm. So when uh, Johnny and I were out exploring yesterday, you're talking about um, race slot cars. We came across, I forget the name of the uh, park it's, now. It's Tampa Bay. Oh, it's the Lake Park. Lake Park in Tampa. Um, we came across just a little hidden gem. We were actually out looking for places to put the kayaks in. Some new, you know, navigating new waters. And if you will. We came, we came across this lake, which we decided, yes, they do have an area we could put in, but it looked super gatory, super gatory, super sketchy. So we're not going to do it. But they did have um, a remote control track. And there were like a ton of people out there. Yes, there was. Racing remote control cars, which I thought was super cool. It was very cool. Where did we go where they had the boats? Was that Disney? Yes. So they have remote control boats at Disney, which which is also cool. But this was this was really cool because it was a dirt track. Yeah, they were, and it was all gas powered. Oh, were they? Yeah. How? <laughs> it's remote control. I love you. They were gas powered engines. How? What do you mean how? It's remote control. They're gas powered remote control cars. How? How would that even be? It's a remote control. Mm-hmm. Isn't that an electrical current sends a signal? To the remote? Uh-huh. The car itself was... How do you know they were gas part? Did you see a little mini You didn't station? hear them? You didn't see it? Was there a little mini gas station? No. Well, yes. There was a guy filling his up. With a teeny weeny little... <laughs> <laughs> They're like sippy cups. <laughs> Dork. Mm. With a teeny weeny. Teeny weeny little gas. I wonder what that how are people doing that with the gas prices that they are? Oh jeez, who knows? Jeez. Yeah. Jeez. Mike Fruity said Steve Shower miss racing slot cars. The closest track to me is about what two hours. What happened to my Mike? We have one down here by us. It probably is two hours from you. Um, Doc said, love the car. Well, AJ. we'll have to, uh, something's going on with my computer. What? Robert Spears said, kayak with gators adds to the excitement. I thought so as well. Johnny's a little weird. Oh, okay. It was just me that was, you were all about it. I forgot. What I a believe da- your words what were, a, were, what a daredevil you I'll are. I'll take my chances with a shark in the Gulf. Yeah, I would rather, I would rather. Hank said, 
uh, oh man, a new YouTube channel, super sketchy, where Eddie and Johnny drive around and find all the gator infested locations. Yes, super them. sketchy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, come watch us die right before your eyes. <laughs> Bob McLaren said, I feel for you, Johnny, and he's laughing. Uh, Joe Lombardo said, your Jeep may have a remote starter, same thing. It does. Yeah. That's just a remote start. You're not it's still a key that turns something on. You're controlling something that's get that's not yeah, the same. It's know. a battery-powered remote control. There's a battery pack on the car that tells it to turn but no but then the engine that runs the car is gas powered robert spears you've they never have, seen that they have very small gas motors and the remotes control them this is real <laughs> is, are, is everyone else see you can go back to us see if we're still glitching is everyone else with uh with me the fact that she's questioning whether gas powered remote control is real <laughs> I just, I don't know. We have remote control cars. Remember, you got them for you and Kevin. Uh huh. They made that same noise. Because they were powered. Not only were the remotes powered by batteries, but the car's engine was powered by the battery. You, you know how there's gas powered cars and then there's battery powered cars? What? You could have both? I suppose. Anyway, Mike Purdue said, "Where I know there's a track in Orlando, and I believe in St. Pete. This one was in Tampa. Tampa, yes." Um, Hank said, Park "Hi, Lake. I'm Johnny Jalopy, and welcome to Super Sketchy." <laughs> oh, just like uh, what do you call it? Uh, yeah, I know. Bob the, McLaren said to put the year under your signature. Oh, thanks, 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 thanks. Our peaks, watching out for us. There we, there we go. There we go. Take a look. At there the you go. There's the products. bad guy one. Um. Boris and Natasha's super, super private. Cool. Uh, spy car. I love it. Yeah. Something fun. It's very hope, cool. Hope you dig it. 20 bucks on the website, guys. Absolutely. Um, and, uh, if you're interested. For sure. Uh, head of the Get it here first before someone else draws it. Yeah. And again, we so thank you for watching with us. We thank you, those folks that are on YouTube watching the playback. That's yes. the cool part of this. Is we do this every, live every Monday night here on us uh, sketchy live uh, on Facebook live, but you you're watching the playback right now. You haven't missed out on anything other than maybe commenting with us, but you can still show still up and you can still leave. Comments. So next week, hit hit the like and subscribe now so you see all the cool ones that are available. Tons five years five seasons we've been doing this. Lots of cool drawings. We've got Star Wars stuff. We got movie cars. We got concept vehicles that I've designed. We got all kinds of stuff. Things that turn into apparel, drawings that become t shirts. There's all kinds of cool stuff. Interaction with the folks uh, out there. You could be a part of it. Come hang out with us on Facebook, Sketchy Live. But we sure appreciate the fact that you stopped in here uh, to watch the playback as well, right, ADB? Yes, for sure. So, hey, head over to the website, johnnyjalopy.com. Um, Check out the merch again, hats. We've got stickers. We've got a ton of shirts. Absolutely. Uh, if you got comments and questions, don't forget to do that as well. Tell your friends. And uh, as always, stay sketchy. We'll see you guys next week. Bye, guys. See ya. Vamoose and Squiddle. Are we out? I don't know. <laughs>